There are a bunch of issues and concepts that I kind of am amazed that people don't understand them when they're really damn simple. Um, but that's true of almost everybody, including me, that if you just have never thought about a particular thing, then it probably won't be clear in your head. Um, and so sometimes it's worth talking about the bleeding obvious, uh, to explain it. Uh, one that's come up is the concept of hierarchy and the, the, there's a bunch of whiny communists who like to like make up their own definitions of anarchy. Um, Like, oh, it doesn't just mean no ruling class, it means no hierarchy, and no money, and no property, and no wearing purple hats on a Tuesday. And uh, No, what it actually means is rule by no one. It's the literal meaning. It doesn't mean any of the other crap they like to stick on. Um, And I just posted a thing about how stupid it is to be anti-hierarchy if you're talking voluntary hierarchy. And the thing is... So many people, and communists aren't the only one, are so muddled in their head about the difference between voluntary hierarchy and forced hierarchy, even though they're drastically different. And so the commies will complain about an employer employee is slave, wage slave, and you're oppressing me and enslaving me by paying me to do work. And no, they're not. Because you don't have to. (laughs) You could quit. And then they wouldn't pay you. But they wouldn't imprison you. They wouldn't prosecute you. They wouldn't beat you up. They just wouldn't pay you. Just like you don't pay them because they don't work for you. But the commies have this weird entitlement mentality that they think these meanie greedy businessmen ruining the world and at the same time they think and you have to give us jobs or we'll starve to death like good lord grow the hell up so and then they they make the bogus argument that well you know we need food so we're forced to work for you no you're forced by nature to do something to feed your sorry self you're not forced to work for that person or anyone in particular. And to bitch about it, like, you know, to bitch about what nature created, like somehow that's the employer's fault that you need food to survive. Those greedy corporations, they're the runs, they're the reason we need to eat. No, they're not. Um, so you have the, the whiny commie mentality that's, it makes no sense. And uh, I posted a thing before about the, like, okay, if I ask you to do something for me and you do it, and not I threaten, I'm not going to do anything to you if you don't, and you do it for me, is that me oppressing you? Well, no, obviously not. What if I ask you to do something and give you a penny? Is that me oppressing you? Well, no, because you could just choose not to. What as as I increase the amount I'm going to pay you if you do the thing for me, at what point do I become an evil, exploiting, capitalist pig dog? And, of course, none of the commies can answer that. They just fly around like idiots because there's no principle in communism. It's just stupid entitlement mentality, self-contradictory crap that for them to pretend that they're oppressed because someone's offering to trade with them is just stupid. Now, there is a legitimate complaint, and every once in a while one of them will mention it, where you can't just stroll off into the woods and and grow your own food or hunt your own food and build your own shelter and stuff because government is going to say, no, that's, that's either our property or we sold it to somebody else, you know, in contrast to the concept of homesteading, which is, hey, if nobody's there and nobody's using it, you don't just own it because the government said so. Like, they didn't own it because they said so to begin with, and they you don't own it because you bought it from them when they didn't own it to begin with. They just declared, yeah, we own this continent, and now we'll sell huge pieces of it. Property ownership of land is 
to be legitimate, it has to be one form or another of, of homesteading. Not just somebody said, this continent's cool, it's mine. That doesn't bestow legitimate ownership on you. Um, so commies will point out, well, we have to work and do a job because of this, but half the time they don't even notice that, yeah, government is the reason for that, not business. And yeah, a lot of times businesses make deals with government and use the violence of government to their benefit, which is bad and immoral. Um, but that's that doesn't mean business is bad and companies are bad and um, and that employers are all evil exploiter oppressors. Like, well, so if they fired all of you, that would be nicer. That would be freeing the slaves. Like, no, they have to give us jobs or we starve to death. Um, but, and that's just part of the whole misunderstanding of hierarchy. And so I, I, I said, it'd be funny to watch a hundred communists try to survive for a week without any kind of hierarchy. So, and that includes, there can't be anybody who defers to somebody else's judgment on something. I don't mean violent rulers. I mean like, oh, or let's plan a garden. Yeah, let's plan a garden. Well, let's see. How many of us have any idea what will grow here? Or how deep to plant things or, you know, basic stuff like that. A few might. A few probably don't. Now, are the few who don't know what the hell they're doing going to listen to? The, the ones who do know what they're doing and follow their instructions because guess what that's a hierarchy you have one group giving instructions and the other group choosing to follow them that's a hierarchy and according to some stupid communists anarchy means don't have any hierarchy and you know there's a million other examples I'm, I made a flippant sarcastic comment about like yeah the, the anarchy I mean the, the non-hierarchy communist football team where the quarterback gets in the huddle and calls a play. All right, 37 slant on three. And they all say, you're oppressing us with your hierarchy. Okay. Do whatever the hell you want, whenever the hell you want. Ready, break. And stop listening to me, and I won't even say anything in the huddle because that's oppressive. Like, anything complex, like building a house. I'd love to see a bunch of people who don't believe in hierarchy building a house. Like, there sort of needs to be a design <laughs> plan for the house. And it sort of needs to be one design. And you sort of need everybody working on it to abide by that one design and follow the instructions on the design or of the guy telling you how the design goes. And that's a, that forms a hierarchy. It's all voluntary. It's all perfectly moral. There's no, it's not oppression. It's, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. But for some odd reason, some commies like to just declare that hierarchy is bad. Which is just so stupid. Because it, it's... You really... You, you almost can't do anything... Anything complex without one form of hierarchy or another. And it doesn't mean, I'm a more important person than you. Like, you can do without that mentality... But you can't do without the, the arrangement where some people are saying, here's how we do this, and other people go along with that. Like, it just, <laughs> what do you think you can accomplish? Let's build a car, but we don't actually have some of the people who get to decide what the car looks like. No, we all decide what our part of it will look like. And then we have this hodgepodge disaster that doesn't work and looks like it joke so it's just it's so weird and and I think part of it is the the phenomenon of some people just phenomenon of some people just want to be even farther outside the box well I don't even believe in this or property or money or hierarchy or language or civilization or talking ooga. Like, wow, you're so radical. Actually, you're just kind of an idiot. Just like... Uh, 
questioning stuff and doubting stuff and rethinking stuff is perfectly good and perfectly useful. You can question whatever the hell you want. But when you throw out stuff just because everybody thinks it and everybody does it, that just starts to get really stupid. Um, because a lot of things that people do, there's a reason they do it. Because it's useful. And it actually performs a function and, and gets stuff done. Um, and there are, you know, that's why there are hierarchies in almost everything. E- even just something like, you know, somebody who knows how to do something teaching someone else, here's how you do it. Like, you just, oh, well, you're not allowed to tell him how to do it, and you, you can't correct him if he does it the wrong way, because that would be oppression and hierarchy. Like, well, that's the wrong freaking way. I'm telling you the right way. You don't have to listen to me. You can do it the wrong way. It's not going to turn out well. In fact, you don't even have to be here. You can just leave. But, uh, it's just... It's weird, and but there, there are people who do that in a bunch of different ways where they, like, try to be more radical by throwing out... And, and another big one is money, where a bunch of commies just have no understanding of money, or property, for that matter. Um, and just everyone in the world believes in property ownership um, of physical stuff. And the people who pretend they don't are full of crap. And you can see what happens when people are that full of crap. If you look at Red China and Soviet Russia, where they say, oh, everybody owns everything. Well, who's going to decide what, who gets what? Well, we'll have a central committee. Well, guess what? The central committee owns everything. If they get to decide what's done with everything, it means they, by definition, own everything. Because to own something means you have the exclusive right to decide what's done with it. So you didn't make nobody own anything or everybody own everything. You just made a central authority own everything. And the end result of that is mass injustice and oppression and death. Yeehaw. But there was still ownership. And it's equally stupid to say, oh, everybody owns everything. Oh, so everybody has an exclusive right to decide what's done with everything. That doesn't make any freaking sense. Like, here's a chair. Three people want to sit down. Well, everybody owns it. Well, uh, there's only one person that's going to fit in the freaking chair. And now nobody knows who has the right to make that decision, and everybody thinks they do, so people are going to fight over it, which is why communism always goes in that direction. Like, well, nobody owns anything, but I'm entitled to whatever I need. So if I need anything and you're depriving me of it, you're an evil, mean, exploiter, oppressor. And so I should have a revolution and steal your stuff. Because I need it. Uh, so it just all becomes mush-headed mayhem. And the concept of property ownership is really damn basic. I mean, there are animals that grasp property ownership. Like, they don't, they don't like, respect the morality of the... <laughs> but they... They will grab a thing and this is mine. And if another one tries to take it from them, um, no, this is mine. Go get your own. It's my freaking banana. I got it out of the tree. Like a freaking chimpanzee understands ownership, not as a philosophical moral thing, but like this is mine. But communists apparently don't. And it's also, it's one of the, uh, it's one of the first things that babies learn. Like, oh, this is mine. I get this. I get to control it. I get to decide what to do with it. Um, And then for a while, (laughs) they're in commie mode where they think whatever I grab is mine. And they have to sort of learn, "Uh, no, you can't just swipe the thing from the kid next to you and have it be yours. That's actually (laughs) it. And so they have to learn peaceful coexistence, which requires not robbing your neighbor. It's something that hopefully they learn early on. But apparently communists never learn it. And they think, if I need it, I have a right to steal it. Except they don't see it as stealing it. They see the other guy having it as being theft, which is just so stupid. Like, you built a thing, you therefore have a thing, but that counts as you robbing me somehow because I need it and you didn't give it to me. It's just, the thinking is just so stupid. 
Um, but so there's, there's just, there's so many things that actually do make sense. And again, it's perfectly fine to question them, but to just reject them because everybody thinks them is just dumb. And money is another one. Just, well, we need a, a, a post scarcity society. Just no, there's never going to be such a thing. There will be, there already is, and there will continue to be societies in which a bunch of things we have so much of that we don't really care. We just share them either freely or pretty damn close to freely. Um, but there's never going to be a point at which there's never more than two people who want the same thing at the same time. <laughs> or never more than one person, I mean. Two people or more. Just duh. Because there's never an infinite amount of everything anybody ever wants. Reality didn't work that way. Um, and I had one goofball yesterday say the only moral kind of distribution of resources is free giving. Like, he thought trade, voluntary trade, is oppressive. And just the idea, like, how do you think a car comes into existence by free giving? Like, oh, we're going to go, I'm going to go work on the assembly line to build this car just because I feel like helping build cars for other people, even though they're not paying me. Like, there's no trade involved. I'm just going to go do that uh, just because I want to. It's like, try it. See how well that works with human nature. And it's why communes often quickly fall apart. And I had somebody else comment who'd been to a commune pointed out that, yeah, immediately it's an argument over how, how things will get done and who's supposed to be doing the work and who gets the you know, who gets the results of the effort and blah, 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 blah. And it always turns into an argument because they have no grasp on the concept of property, which is just an extension of self-ownership. So it turns into a giant mess where the, the concept of property is really the, the basis of civilization because the concept of property is just figuring out that owning yourself also means you own the fruits of your labor. Um, cause otherwise you can't have anything like oh, I built a shelter Well, tough shit. Cause I need a shelter. So get out. Hey, that's not fair. The, Hey, not fair is grasping property ownership, which is it's mine. Cause I made it. And without that, you just don't have civilization. And the thing is people can be really prosperous and really generous and share all over the place. But if underlying that there isn't a belief in property ownership, it's still going to be a mess. Because the people will just come along and say, well, uh, we decided that we want that. It's like, well, there isn't enough for everybody to have it. Well, too bad. We get it. And so even in the most you know, prosperous, benevolent, charitable society that shares stuff, it has to be on a foundation of the, of an understanding of private property for that to work. Um, one way to say that is you can't generously give something if it isn't yours. If it is yours and people can nicely give stuff to each other and that's fine and dandy, um, but they have to own it to begin with. And then if they give it to somebody else, they transfer the exclusive right to decide what's done with it, also known as ownership, and then the other person owns it. Like, that's still, like the whole, oh, we don't want property, we want sharing. Like, neither side of sharing can happen without the concept of private property ownership. Because the person who gives isn't sharing, he isn't generously giving something if it's not his to give. And the guy who receives it, it's not his unless he owns it. So here, I give you this, and it's still not yours, because if some other whiny commie decides that he needs it, he has the right to steal it from you. So it wasn't mine to give, and it's not yours to receive, and nobody can give anything, and we're just going to have a violent free-for-all like stupid animals, while thinking we're all philosophically enlightened. And so there's just, there's a lot about 
philosophy and economics and science and stuff that, yeah, it really is figured out and there really is a reason people do it that way. And you can question it and you can doubt it until you either find that there was something wrong with it or understand why it is the way it is. Um, but, you know, humanity has been building on discoveries and inventions for hundreds of years. Like, hey, look, I figured out how to control that stuff we see every once in a while, the orange and yellow jumpy around stuff that's really damn hot and uh, it cooks food and does this and that and the other thing. Uh, I know how to control it and how to start it and how to not get burned by it. And, well, I made a wheel. And I know how to make a big thing to carry other big things. And, you know, and so they build more and more. And unfortunately, uh, society seems to be dumb enough that a lot of people have forgotten that. You know, the whole flat earth thing is you, you don't understand aspects of geometry and astronomy that little children understood a thousand years ago. <laughs> like way to go because this there's not new things that are understood and you know people find out new things all the time but to forget what we already know you know to go backwards is just kind of depressing and so when people just reject like we need no hierarchy just no there's a reason hierarchy voluntary hierarchy exists is not only amazingly productive but pretty damn necessary to civilization as is the concept of private property and a medium of exchange also known as money um not the fiat crap we have now but an actual honest medium of exchange and so on and so forth so it's sort of it's sad when somebody like because you know, my whole theme and what I try to do is get people to re-examine their belief in authority and reject it because it really is bogus and immoral and irrational. And some people are like, wow, this is fun, throwing out things we've always thought. Let's throw out some more that we thought without finding out if there was a reason to think them. And then they just come wishy-washy doofuses. And then, you know, the, the ultimate example of that is the people who, well, there is no actual truth it's just everybody's opinions and everybody's opinions are equally valid and and so nobody knows anything and then just no then you just become a well what is it called solipsist there isn't really anything just shut up and go away then. <laughs> take your non-existent self and go away because and the only reason people can get away with that is the prosperity created by smarter, hardworking people allows them to not starve to death, even while having a profoundly stupid view of the world. Um, and so, yeah, that's the, the downside of <laughs> prosperity is it allows for a society that includes a lot of lazy, useless, stupid people. I mean, economically useless so, but, you know, I guess I'll take that downside. The upside is we don't, like, starve to death on a regular basis. So, yeah, I guess it's worth having a bunch of lazy idiots. Um, as long as lazy idiots don't, like, vote a ruling class into power. Yeehaw. So, alrighty. So, yeah, hierarchy is not a bad thing. And the people who can't distinguish between someone offering you a job and someone claiming the right to rule you uh, it's just kind of frustrating that people can't grasp something that basic <laughs>